what should our attitude be towards those who practice wickedness? You know, the mainstream liberal movement in this country has basically taken the month of June and said that the month of June is Pride Month, where people who are practicers of homosexual activity and things like that would be paraded around and promoted and everybody would say it's wonderful and everybody changes their logo to be rainbow colored because they want to make these people feel good and accepted and let them know that we're tolerant. Well, you know, the Bible says that if we really love folks, we don't suffer sin upon them. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. The Bible says that we, if we really love people, we will tell them the truth. You know, so when we're asking the question, what should our attitude be towards folks who practice wickedness? We shouldn't be harsh. We shouldn't be ugly. We shouldn't be mean. Um, you know, we certainly shouldn't be arrogant or anything like that. We recognize that we we have failed uh, and that we still probably fail and we need this forgiveness just like they do. So what I'd like for us to consider for just a minute is Hebrews 5 verses 1 through 3. In Hebrews 5, an argument is made about the, uh, the priesthood of men and the foreshadow being Melchizedek and the priesthood of Christ. In Hebrews 5, it says, For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in the things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity? And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sin. So what you see is God made under the law of Moses and even under the patriarchy, God made the priesthood of the same men that the priesthood represented, right? So when the Levites uh, of the nation of Israel, they were part of that nation and they were just men, right? They failed. They had adversity. They had infirmity, the text says, which is sin. They failed and they understood that they needed this forgiveness and this mercy. Therefore, they should be merciful. That's the same concept that is emphasized in the New Testament, that uh, we are to be merciful if we expect mercy. So we should keep that kind of idea in mind as we think about what our attitude ought to be towards those who are practicing sin. Now, we understand there's a difference between practicing sin, that is living a sinful lifestyle, living in adultery, living in a, in, you know, in, a, in fornication, living in homosexuality. If you're a thief and you steal on a regular basis, you know, these are the things we're talking about. You can't possibly expect to be pleasing to God while doing these things. It's just not going to happen. 1 Corinthians 6, 10 through 12. We understand that a person must change. Now, that doesn't mean that if a person was practicing homosexuality, then they learn the truth and they stop doing that. Of course, they can be forgiven, just like anybody else can be forgiven. Um, and, you know, and we don't try to really emphasize one sin over any others because every sin is going to keep you out of heaven. But a lot of times, sins, uh, certain sins are very prevalent, especially during these kind of months. So we've got to be careful the way that we have, you know, we present ourselves to others. I think if we continued the line of thinking that the Hebrews writer established in chapter 5, verses 1 through 3, that we are cognizant of our need for mercy, that we recognize that we have been forgiven for those of us that have obeyed the gospel, and that we act accordingly to others so that they also can obtain this forgiveness. I think that if we allow that to be the kind of guiding principle uh, whenever we think of others and whenever we uh, interact with others, I think that's going to help us out, right? I think that's going to be beneficial to us because we will then act with compassion. We will act with gentleness. We will act with humility. We will genuinely have the right motive, which is love, Ephesians 4 and verse 15. And then whenever we tell folks the truth, we can uh, hopefully present it in such a way as that we're not being ugly or offensive in our presentation but we tell them the truth because we really care about them. So what should our attitude be towards those who practice sin? We should be compassionate. We should love them enough to tell them the truth. And we should genuinely care about them and want them to change, right? And I, and I think that if we do that, the Bible establishes the fact that we'll have done our job and hopefully people will respond appropriately to it. Because ultimately, we're on this life, we're on this earth for a purpose. Our purpose is to glorify God, Isaiah 43 and verse eight, and we've got to do so by helping our fellow man. Do you disagree with us? That's okay. We would encourage you to contact us at freeportcoc at gmail.com. Send us an email, comment on our videos. If we can help you in any way, if we can study with you on anything, please let us know. If you're watching this and you are practicing a sinful lifestyle, 
and you want to discuss it with somebody privately, I will help you in every way that I can. I do not think I'm better than you. Nobody that I know thinks that. We just genuinely want to help you. So if we can help you in any way, please let us know. Thank you for watching and have a great day.